Sixth grade, unit two, lesson one. Introducing ratios and ratio language. Number one. In a fruit basket, there are nine bananas, four apples, and three plums. A. The ratio of bananas to apples is nine to four, or nine bananas to four apples. B. The ratio of plums to apples is 3 to 4, or 3 plums to 4 apples. C. For every blank apples, there are blank plums. For every 4 apples, there are 3 plums. D. For every 3 bananas, there is 1 9 bananas divided by 3 equals 3 bananas, and 3 plums divided by 3 equals 1 plum. So for every 3 bananas, there is 1 plum. Number 2. Complete the sentence to describe this picture. A. The ratio of dogs to cats is 3 to 4. For every 3 dogs, there's 4 cats. B. For every blank dogs, there are blank cats. For every three dogs, there are four cats. Number three. Write two different sentences that use ratios to describe the number of eyes and legs in this picture. I almost missed it but you can barely see the second eye on the turtle. So there's two eyes on the turtle and two eyes on the hippo. So I can see a total of four eyes altogether and a total of eight legs altogether. The ratio is four eyes to eight legs. Another sentence that uses ratios to describe the number of eyes and legs in the picture is, the ratio is eight legs to four eyes. Number four. Choose an appropriate unit of measurement for each quantity. A. Area of a rectangle. Well, we know area is base times height, and that's two dimensions. So we're going to look for centimeters to the second power, since the second power stands for two-dimensional, base times height. B. Volume of a prism. Volume is three-dimensional, width times length times height. So we're going to look for centimeters to the third power, or centimeters cubed. C. Side of a square. So they're talking about the side length of a square. So we're just going to look for one length of measurement, or one dimension. And that would be centimeters. D. Area of a square. Again, just like A, to find the area, you need to multiply base times height, and that's two-dimensional. So we're going to look for centimeters to the second power, since second power stands for two-dimensional, base times height. E, volume of a cube. Again, volume is three-dimensional, width times length times height. So we're going to look for centimeters to the third power, or centimeters cubed. Number five, find the volume and surface area of each prism. A, prism A is three centimeters by three centimeters by three centimeters. Volume equals width times length times height, and surface area for a cube would be six times the base times the height, since there's six sides to a cube. So to find the volume of this cube, I'm going to multiply 3 times 3 times 3. And 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27 cubic centimeters or 27 centimeters cubed, which is the same as 27 centimeters to the third power. To find the surface area, I'm going to multiply 6 times 3 times 3, since there's 6 sides and the area of each side is 3 times 3. So 6 times 3 times 3 is 54. So the surface area is 54 square centimeters or 54 centimeters squared, which is the same as 54 centimeters to the second power. 
B. Prism B is 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters by just 1 centimeter. So to find the volume, I'm going to multiply 5 times 5 times 1. And 5 times 5 times 1 is 25. So the volume of prism B is 25 cubic centimeters or 25 centimeters to the third power. To find the surface area, I'm going to multiply 4 times 5 times 1, since there's 4 sides that have an area of 5 times 1, plus 2 times 5 times 5, since there's 2 sides that have an area of 5 times 5. 4 times 5 times 1 is 20, and 2 times 5 times 5 is 50. 20 plus 50 is 70. The surface area of prism B is 70 centimeters squared. C. Compare the volumes of the prisms and their surface areas. Does the prism with the greatest volume also have the greatest surface area? Prism A has the greater volume, but prism B has the greater surface area. Number 6. Which figure is a triangular prism? Select all that apply. Figures A, C, and D are all triangular prisms. Sixth grade. Unit 2, Lesson 2, representing ratios with diagrams. Number 1. Here is a diagram that describes the cups of green and white paint in a mixture. Green paint cups. There's four of them. White paint cups. There's two of them. Select all the statements that accurately describe this diagram. A. The ratio of cups of white paint to cups of green paint. That is correct. B. For every cup of green paint, there are two cups of white paint. It's actually the other way around. It should be for every two cups of green paint, there's one cup of white paint. C. The ratio of cups of green paint to cups of white paint is 4 to 2. So there's four cups of green paint, two cups of white paint, so that is true. D. For every cup of white paint, there are two cups of green paint. So for every cup of white paint, there are two cups of green paint, that is true. And E. The ratio of cups of green paint to cups of white paint is two to four. That is not true because they mention the green paint first and in the ratio the first number says two but there's actually four cups of green paint. The first number right here would have had to have been a four. In order to make it true they should say four to two. That would have been true but they didn't. Number two. To make a snack mix combine two cups of raisins with four cups of pretzels and six cups of almonds. A. Create a diagram to represent the quantities of each ingredient in this recipe. Two cups of raisins. So let's represent raisins with the letter R. And we'll have two R's to represent two cups. Four cups of pretzels. So let's put four P's to represent four cups of pretzels. And then finally, six cups of almonds. Six A's to represent the almonds. Number 2B. Use your diagram to complete each sentence. The ratio of raisins to pretzels to almonds is 2 to 4 to 6. There are blank cups of pretzels for every cup of raisins. So this is singular. One cup. So for every one cup of raisins, so if we were to take one cup of raisins, that would be half the cups of raisins, we'd have to take half the cup of pretzels. Two cups of pretzels for every one cup of raisin. There are blank cups of almonds for every cup of raisins. So again, this is singular for every cup of raisin. So if we took one cup of raisin, that's half the cups. So let's take half the cups of almonds. That would be three. There are three cups of almonds for every cup of raisins. Number three, A. 
A square is three inches by three inches. What is the area? We know that the formula for area is base times height. So if a square is three inches by three inches, if their side lengths are three, it would be three inches times three inches, and that would equal nine inches squared, or nine square inches. So the area would be nine square inches. 3B, a square has a side length of five feet. What is the area? So again, if the lengths are five, it's gonna be five times five, and the area is going to be 25, and this time it's not inches, it's feet squared. 25 feet squared. C. The area of a square is 36 square centimeters. What is the length of each side of the square? So I just drew a box that's two by two, and it has one, two, three, four on the inside. So the area is four when the side lengths are two. Let's try it again with four. So this side length is four for the square. So it's four by four. The base is four, the height is four. Four times four is 16. So four times four equals 16. Let's count them. One, two, three, 14, 15, 16. So we're not looking for 16 in here. We're trying to get 36. So I just made a square with side lengths of six. So six times six equals 36. So if we were to count these, we'd have one, two, three, one, three, two, three, three, 34, 35, 36. The area of a square is 36 square centimeters. What is the length of each side of the square? The length of each side of the square is six. Number four, find the area of this quadrilateral. Explain or show your strategy. As the shape is right now, it's a little bit difficult, but if I were to turn this into two triangles, it would be much easier because I know the formula for finding the area of two triangles. One way that I could do it is I could divide it right down the middle here. And now I have this triangle and I have a second triangle right underneath it. So for this top triangle, the pink triangle, let's get its dimensions. Let's get its height and its width. One, one two, three. So the height equals three units. And its base stretches from here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the base is six. The height is three, and the base is six. And if you remember the formula, formula for a triangle, the area of a triangle is half of the base times the height. So that should be pretty simple. Let's do base times height. Six times three. Six times three is going to equal 18. And then now we need to cut that in half, right? So let's cut that in half. Half of 18 equals nine. So it's not just nine, it's nine units because they didn't identify what they were. They didn't say feet or inches. So we're gonna say nine units. And these are squares, which are two dimensional. Nine unit squares. Let's find the bottom one. You know, we can use our imagination and say that this is the base right here. And then we can count one, two, three, 
four, five for the height. So the bottom triangle, the height is five, and the base is one, two, three, four, five, six. The base is six. So five times six equals 30. And then remember, it's a triangle, so we have to cut it in half. So half of 30 is 15 units. And remember, we're talking about squares. The area of this whole shape, this original shape that looked like a kite, we have to add this top one, which was 9, to the bottom one, which was 15. So what is 9 plus 15? 24. The area of this triangle is 24 units squared. Number 5. Complete each equation with a number that makes it true. A. 1 eighth times 8. A few ways to do this. 1 eighth multiplied by 8. And I have to put it over 1, so it's also a fraction. So we're going to go 1 times 8 equals 8. 8 times 1, you're just multiplying straight across, equals 8. So 8 over 8, that really means 8 divided by 8. So 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1. So B, 3 eighths times 8. Well, that answer is just going to be 3 times bigger than the first one that we just did. If 1 eighth times 8 is 1, then 3 eighths times 8 would be 3. 3 eighths times 8 3 times 8 is 24. 8 times 1 is 8. And remember, 24 over 8, or 24 eighths, equals... It's the same thing as 24 divided by 8. What is 24 divided by 8? 3. So we can put 3 up here. So now we're doing 1 eighth times 7. 1 8 times 7. 7. So now we get 1 times 7 is 7. 8 times 1 is 8. So now we got our answer would be 7 eighths. 7 eighths. 3 eighths times 7. So my guess is that it's going to be 3 times bigger than the first one because 3 eighths is three times bigger than one eighth. So seven eighths times three is gonna be 21 eighths. So my guess is that we're gonna get 21 eighths. Let's test this out. Three eighths times seven. Three times seven is 21. Eight times one is eight. So here we have an improper fraction, meaning that the numerator is larger than the denominator or the top number is bigger than the bottom number. Again, it's like a division problem. We could simplify this and reduce it. 21 divided by 8. How many times does 8 go into 21? 8 times 3 is 24, so that's too many times. How about twice? 8 times 2 is 16. So 8 times 2 is 16. And then what's the remainder? 21 minus 16 is 5 eighths. 2 and 5 eighths. So either one of these answers could work, but I'll use this mixed number answer right here. Before we go, I want to show you what I was thinking of with the 1 eighth of 8 from A. Working on A right now. I'm going to divide this up into 8 pieces. So we have 8 pieces. This number down here tells you how many pieces you're going to divide it up into. So we've divided it up into eight different pieces. So each of these are worth one. One eighth times eight is the same thing as of eight. One eighth of eight. It's asking what is one eighth of eight? 
each one of these is considered a fraction of the whole, right? And that fraction is one eighth. So let's take that one eighth, the value inside there is one. So we know that the answer is one. When it said three eighths of eight, well, you take this one eighth, two eighths, three eighths. So three eighths of eight is three. Sixth grade, unit two, lesson three, recipes. Number one, a recipe for one batch of spice mix says combine three teaspoons of mustard seed, five teaspoons of chili powder, and one teaspoon of salt. How many batches are represented by the diagram? Explain or show your reasoning. Well, we needed three teaspoons of mustard seeds, five teaspoons of chili powder, one teaspoon of salt. So that's enough for one batch. Let's take three more teaspoons of mustard seed, five more teaspoons of chili powder, and one more teaspoon of salt. So that gives us enough for another batch. And then finally, let's see what we have left. Three teaspoons of mustard seed, five teaspoons of chili powder, and one teaspoon of salt. So that gives us a total of three batches. And the diagram itself explains the reasoning. Number two, Priya makes chocolate milk by mixing two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. Draw a diagram that clearly represents two batches of her chocolate milk. So when she's making one batch, she needs two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. So two cups of milk. Let's actually represent the cups of milk by drawing two M's and five teaspoons of cocoa powder by drawing five C's. Two cups of milk and five tablespoons of cocoa powder. But we need to double this batch. So if we were to double the batch, we need two more cups of milk and five more tablespoons of cocoa powder. So we need a four to 10 ratio of milk to cocoa powder. Number three, in a recipe for fizzy grape juice, the ratio of cups of sparkling water to cups of grape juice concentrate is three to one. A. Find two more ratios of cups of sparkling water to cups of juice concentrate that would make a mixture that tastes the same as this recipe. They gave us a three to one ratio. So no matter what we do, we have to keep that same ratio because they want this to taste the same. So let's just double the amounts. We have a six to two because we doubled the serving of sparkling water and we doubled the serving of juice concentrate and let's triple the original amount. So now we have nine cups of sparkling water and three cups of juice concentrate. We found two more ratios, a six to two and a nine to three. B, describe another mixture of sparkling water and grape juice that would taste different than this recipe. Well, remember, they started out with a three to one. So we could change it up. And instead of having three cups of sparkling water, we could only have two cups of sparkling water and one cup of grape juice. That would make it taste differently. And then finally, we could go in the same direction and just have one cup of sparkling water and one cup of grape juice. So here are the two mixtures that would taste different. Number four, write the missing number under each tick mark on the number line. Here's the tick mark here and a tick mark here with a missing number. The numbers that they provided us, 18, 30, and 42, are identifying the distance between these two tick marks and these two tick marks. The difference between 18 and 30 is 12. So when they go from this point to this point, that's 12. And then from 30 to 42, that's 12. So if we were gonna go halfway, halfway from 18 to 30, that would be adding half of 12. What's half of 12? Six. So 18 plus six more would bring us to 24. So this tick mark would be the 24 spot. Halfway between 30 and 42 would be adding half of 12. So what's 30 plus half of 12? 36. So underneath this tick mark, we're gonna need a 36. 
Number five, at the kennel, there are six dogs for every five cats. The ratio of dogs to cats is six to five. B, the ratio of cats to dogs. Now they want us to put cats first. So there's five cats to six dogs. C, for every six dogs, there are five cats. D, the ratio of cats to dogs, well that's the same as B, is five cats for every six dogs. Number six, Elena has 80 unit cubes. What is the volume of the largest cube she can build with them? She has 80 cubes and she's going to stack them up in stacks like this. This example has four cubes stacked up on the top and another four cubes stacked up on the bottom for a total of eight cubes. So there's eight cubes here. We know that there's eight. The dimensions are two by two by two. And to find the volume, the volume is base times height times length. So times two times two equals eight. So that's how we found this one. But they're asking us to find the largest cube possible using 80 cubes. This example only used eight cubes. So let's come up with a scenario where we have a base, a height, and a length, and they're all the same. So let's test this one out. 5 times 5 times 5. Now that's going to be more than 80. 5 times 5 is 25 times 5. It's going to be 125. So having side lengths on each face of 5 would be too much, would be too big. Let's try 4. 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. And 16 times 4 equals 64. I think that the largest volume is 64 units cubed. Or 64 cubes. 64 cubes is the most that Elena would be able to fit into the volume of a cube. Even though she had 80 cubes, she'd have some left over. Number seven, fill in the blanks to make each equation true. Three times one third. Three times one third equals three over three. Three over three really means three divided by three. And three divided by three is one. Three times one third is really the same thing as three divided by three. So 10 times one tenth is the same thing as 10 divided by 10. So what is 10 divided by 10? It's one. So let's use our imagination and pretend that each of these slices is a fifth. In other words, it takes five of these slices to make one whole. If we were to cut each of these slices in half, then they would change from fifths to tenths. And why is that? Because it takes 10 tenths to make one whole. So this question is asking us 10 times 10 tenths. Well, there's 10 times 10 tenths right there in this picture. So, of course, 10 tenths equals one whole. That's another picture, another way to do it. But what we notice is that 10 divided by 10 equals 1, and 10 times 1 tenth equals 1. So knowing that, we have here 19 times 1 19th, and of course that's going to equal 1. And then here we have A. So just like 19 was represented here, 19 is represented as the denominator in this fraction here. It's going to be the same thing. We have A represented here and A represented as the denominator. Without doing any math, we know that the answer is going to be 1, as long as A does not equal 0. E. 5 times what equals 1? 5 times 1 fifth equals 1. In other words, how many fifths does it take to equal 1? You need 5 fifths to equal 1. 5 fifths equals 1. 17 times what equals 1? 17 times 1 equals 1. 
B times what equals 1? B times 1 over B equals 1. If we had one here that said 2 times what equals 1, we know that 2 halves equals 1. 2 halves equals 1, right? When you have 2 halves, you have 1 whole. So 2 halves times a half equals 1. Sixth grade, unit two, lesson four, color mixtures. Number one, here is a diagram showing a mixture of red paint and green paint needed for one batch of a particular shade of brown. Red paint, three cups, green paint, two cups. Add to the diagram so that it shows three batches of the same shade of brown paint. One batch is represented by three cups of red and two cups of green. So in order to represent three batches, we would simply recreate the three cups of red and two cups of green in all three batches. This represents three batches of the same shade of brown, each batch having three red cups of paint and two green cups of paint. Number two, Diego makes green paint by mixing 10 tablespoons of yellow paint and two tablespoons of blue paint. Which of these mixtures produces the same shade of green paint as Diego's mixture? Select all that apply. He uses 10 tablespoons of yellow paint to two tablespoons of blue paint. But we're looking for a ratio of 10 to two, yellow to blue. A does not work because they have the same ratio, five to one. Five to one is the same as 10 to two. However, they put blue paint first, so A would not work. B, mix tablespoons of blue paint and yellow paint with the ratio of one to five. B would work because they're mixing one tablespoon blue paint and five tablespoons of yellow paint. C. Mix tablespoons of yellow paint and blue paint with a ratio of 15 to 3. Yellow paint, 15. Blue paint, 3. 15 to 3 is the same ratio as 10 to 2. C would also work. D. Mix 11 tablespoons of yellow paint and 3 tablespoons of blue paint. That would not work because the ratio of 11 to 3 is not equivalent to the ratio of 10 to 2. Number three, to make one batch of blue sky paint, Claire mixes two cups of blue paint with one gallon of white paint. A, explain how Claire can make two batches of sky blue paint. Well, one batch of sky blue paint, she mixes two cups of blue paint with one gallon of white paint. So let's just double that to make two batches. In order to make two batches, you just double two cups of blue paint, that would give you four cups, and you double the one gallon of white paint, that gives you two gallons of white. So you would need four cups of blue, two gallons of white. B. Explain how to make a mixture that is a darker shade of blue than the sky blue. Increase the ratio of blue paint to white paint. Example, five tablespoons of blue paint to a half a gallon of white paint. C. Explain how to make a mixture that is a lighter shade of blue than the sky blue. Increase the amount of white paint compared to blue paint. Example, a ratio of five tablespoons of blue paint to two gallons of white paint. Number four, a smoothie recipe calls for three cups of milk, two frozen bananas, and one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. It's three cups of milk, two frozen bananas, and one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. A, create a diagram to represent the quantities of each ingredient in the recipe. Three M's represents three cups of milk, two B's represents two frozen bananas, and one C represents one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. B. Write three different sentences that use a ratio to describe the recipe. My smoothie recipe has three times the cups of milk than it does tablespoons of chocolate syrup. 2. My smoothie recipe has two times the amount of frozen bananas than it does tablespoons of chocolate syrup. 3. The ratio of milk to frozen bananas to tablespoons of chocolate syrup is three cups of milk to two frozen bananas to one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. Number five, write the missing number under each tick mark on the number line. So we're gonna look for each tick mark. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. And here's a tick mark with a missing number. From the zero to the six represents six. And this looks like it's about halfway to the six. So what's halfway to the six? Three. 
So zero plus three is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus three is, is 12. 12 plus three is 15. 15 plus three is 18. Let me fill this one in. 3 plus 3 is 6. So we have 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15. 15 plus 3 is 18. So we have all our tick marks filled in. Number 6. Find the area of the parallelogram. Show your reasoning. Let me try it like this. Looks like the length is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length is seven and the height is one, two, three. And the height is three. So I think that the area is equal to seven times three, which is 21 units squared. 21 units squared. Now I wanna see if I can create a better picture. I'm going to take this one and place it right inside there. So now we have something that is one, two, three units tall times one, two, three, four, five, five units long. So the area of this one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Three times five is fifteen. So we have fifteen square units represented here. We need to now deal with this section here that's left over. So let's take this piece and move it and put it here. Now we have something that's one, two. So we have two by one, two, three, four, five, six. So two by three was six. So if we were to add 15 and six, we would get 21 square units. So I showed you two different ways to find the area of that parallelogram. And both ways showed that the area of the parallelogram was 21 units squared, or 21 square units. Number seven, 11 times 1 fourth equals 11 fourths. And 11 fourths means the same thing as 11 divided by four. How many times does four go into 11? Two, with how many left over? Well, four times two is eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's three left over, four, two and three fourths. So we can write here two and three fourths. B, seven times one fourth fourths, which is the same thing as seven divided by four. How many times does four go into seven? Once with how many left over? Four, five, six, seven. That's three left over, four. So that's going to be one and three fourths. Seven times one fourth is one and three fourths. C. 13 times 1 27th. 13 times 1 27. 13 times 1 is 13, and 1 times 27 is 27. 13 over 27. D. 13 times 1 99th. 13 times 1 99 equals 13 over 99. E, x times 1 over y. 1 times x is x, and 1 times y is y. So we have x over y. And that's true as long as y does not equal 0. Well, there you've completed Unit 2, Lesson 4, Color Mixtures. Unit 2, Lesson 5, Defining Equivalent Ratios. Number 1. Each of these is a pair of equivalent ratios. For each pair, explain why they are equivalent ratios or draw a diagram that shows why they are equivalent ratios. A. 4 to 5 and 8 to 10. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, four, five. Four to five, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, ten. So this diagram worked for four to five, and it also worked for eight to ten, proving that four to five is the same ratio as eight to ten. B, 18 to three, and six to one. One, two, three, four, five, six to one. Six to one ratio. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen to three. So this worked for six to one and it works for eighteen to three. Two to seven and ten thousand to thirty five thousand. 10,000 to 35,000 is no different than 10 to 35. If we had two to seven, five times greater, two times five would be 10, and seven times five would be 35. The same thing could be done to make these things 10,000. Like two times 5,000 would get you to 10,000 and seven times 5,000 would get you to 35,000. Number two, explain why six to four and 18 to eight are not equivalent ratios. Six to 18 means that six became three times greater. The six times three equals 18. Four to eight is only two times greater, not three times greater. What would make this equivalent is if this were a 12. Four times three would equal 12. Six times three gets you to 18. They're not equivalent ratios. Number three, three to six and six to three. 3 to 6, 3 times 2 gets you to 6. 6 times 2 would get you to 12, and this 3 is not a 12. Therefore, it's not an equivalent ratio. Number 4, this diagram represents 3 batches of light yellow paint. Draw a diagram that represents one batch of the same shade of light yellow paint. So all of this represents 3 batches. So if we were to divide this by 3, it would become 1 batch. So we're looking to make one batch. So let's divide this by three. So there were nine cups of white paint. There are 15 cups of yellow paint. So one batch would be three cups of white paint and five cups of yellow paint. Number five, in the fruit bowl, there are six bananas, four apples, and three oranges. For every four apples, there are three oranges. The ratio of bananas to oranges is six to three. Six bananas for every three oranges. C, the ratio of blank to blank is four to six. There are four apples to six bananas. The ratio of blank to blank is four to six. The ratio of apples to bananas is four to six. For every one orange, there are blank bananas. Well, the ratio of oranges to bananas is three to six. So there's twice as many bananas as there are oranges. So when there's one orange, there must be two bananas. Number six, write fractions for point A and point B on the number line from zero to one represents one. This point here represents the halfway point. So this is one half. This here, from zero to one, it represents one. And let's see how many pieces it's cut into. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is cut into six even pieces. So we have six pieces to make one whole, and it's cut into six even pieces. First one here would be one. Six A would be two sixths, which is the same as one third. The halfway point 
That would be 3 sixths, which is the same as 1 half. And then this one is 4 sixths. B is going to be 5 sixths. And then obviously right here at the end, you're going to get to 6 sixths. So they needed the tick mark for B, which is 5 sixths. They needed the tick mark of A, which is one third. A equals one third. B equals five sixths. You're done with unit two, lesson five, defining equivalent ratios. Unit two, lesson six. A particular shade of orange paint has two cups of yellow paint for every three cups of red paint. On the double number line, circle the numbers of cups of yellow and red paint needed for three batches of orange paint. For one batch, you need two cups of yellow paint and three cups of red paint. So for three batches, you'd multiply two times three to get six and three times three to get nine. So you'd need six cups of yellow paint and nine cups of red paint to make three batches of orange paint. Number 2A. This double number line diagram shows the amount of flour and eggs needed for one batch of cookies. Complete the diagram to show the amount of flour and eggs for two, three, and four batches of cookies. For one batch you need five cups of flour. So I'm just going to count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, and twenty. For eggs you need three for one batch, so I'm going to count by three. 3, 6, 9, and 12. B. What is the ratio of cups of flour to eggs? There's 5 cups of flour to 3 cups of eggs. C. How much flour and how many eggs are used in 4 batches of cookies? 1, 2, 3, 4. There's 20 cups of flour and 12 eggs used in 4 batches of cookies. So the ratio is 20 to 12. D. How much flour is used with 6 eggs? We can see here there's 6 eggs, so we use 10 cups of flour. E. How many eggs are used with 15 cups of flour? There's 15 cups of flour. We used 9 eggs. Number three, here is a representation showing the amount of red and blue paint that makes two batches of purple paint. A, on the double number line, label the tick marks to represent amounts of red and blue paint used to make batches of this shade of purple paint. I'm gonna make a set of double number lines and inside these boxes, each represents the amount of paint for one batch. So three to two ratio. A six to four ratio would be for two batches or a nine to six ratio for three batches. A 12 to eight ratio for four batches. B, how many batches are made with 12 cups of red paint? Well, 12 cups of red paint is represented in the fourth batch. So there's four batches made with 12 cups of red paint. C. How many batches are made with six cups of blue paint? Two, four, six, eight. With six cups of blue paint, three batches are made. One, two, three. Three. Three batches. Number four. Diego estimates that there will need to be three pizzas for every seven kids at his party. Select all the statements that express this ratio. A. The ratio of kids to pizzas is seven to three. Yes, that's correct, seven to three. B, the ratio of pizzas to kids is three to seven. Yes, that is correct. There are three pizzas for every seven kids. C, the ratio of kids to pizzas is three to seven. No, that's incorrect. The number of kids is not three and the number of pizzas is not seven. D, the ratio of pizzas to kids is seven to three. No, that's not true. There are not seven pizzas and there are not three kids. E, for every seven kids, there need to be three pizzas. Yes, that's true. For every seven kids, there will be three pizzas. Number five. 
Draw a parallelogram that is not a rectangle that has an area of 24 square units. Explain or show how you know the area is 24 square units. I'm going to make the height 4 units and the length 6 units. The area would be 4 times 6 which is 24 units squared. B. Draw a triangle that has an area of 24 square units. Explain or show how you know the area is 24 square units. First I'm going to draw a rectangle and then I'm going to cut that rectangle in half. This rectangle is going to be 8 units by 6 units. So 8 times 6 would be 48. And when you cut 48 in half, the area of the triangle would be 24 units squared. Congratulations, you've completed Unit 2, Lesson 6. Unit 2, Lesson 7. Creating Double Number Line Diagrams. 1. A recipe for cinnamon rolls uses 2 tablespoons of sugar per teaspoon of cinnamon for the filling. Complete the double number line diagram to show the amount of cinnamon and sugar in 3, 4, and 5 batches. There's one batch, two batches, we're just counting by ones. One, two, three, four, and five. And down here we're counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, and ten. So here's the third batch, the fourth batch, and the fifth batch. Number two. One batch of meatloaf contains two pounds of beef and one cup of breadcrumbs. Complete the double number line diagram to show the amounts of beef and breadcrumbs needed for one, two, three, and four batches of meatloaf. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So for one batch, it's two pounds. So two batches would be double that. That's four pounds. Four plus two is six. Eight. We're just increasing by two. And down here for the breadcrumbs, we start out with a half a cup. So down here, I need to start with a half a cup. When we double a half a cup, we have one whole cup. So remember, we're counting by halves. So this is going to be one and a half cups. And then finally, the fourth one would be two cups. So this would be the first batch, the second batch, the third batch, and the fourth batch. Number three, a recipe for tropical fruit punch says, combine four cups of pineapple juice with five cups of orange juice. A, create a double number line showing the amount of each type of juice in one, two, three, four, and five batches of the recipe. So this would be the pineapple juice number line, and this would be the orange juice number line. One batch, two batches, three batches, four batches, five batches. So we're starting out with four cups of pineapple juice. So we're gonna count by fours. We have eight, 12, 16, and finally 20. Now for the orange juice, we're going to start with five cups of orange juice and continue increasing that by five. We'll have 10, 15, 20, and 25. So this would be the ratio needed. This would be the first batch, the second batch, third batch, fourth batch, and fifth batch. B. If 12 cups of pineapple juice are used with 20 cups of orange juice, will the recipe taste the same? Explain your reasoning. Well, 12 cups of pineapple juice is supposed to be used with 15 cups of orange juice. If you increase that to 20 cups, you're going to taste more orange juice than in the original mixture. So the answer would be no. And then you would say too much OJ, too much orange juice. C. The recipe also calls for one third cup of lime juice for every five cups of orange juice. Add a line to your diagram to represent the amount of lime juice in different batches of tropical fruit punch. I'm going to add a line for lime juice in a different color. 
the green line will represent lime juice. One third cup of lime juice for every five cups of orange juice. So down here where it says five cups of orange juice, that would mean that we have one third of a cup. And then above the 10, we would have two thirds. Above the 15, we would have three thirds, which is one whole cup. Above the 20, we're gonna have four thirds, which is one and one third cup. Above the 25, we'll have five thirds, which is equal to one and two thirds cups of lime juice. Number four, one batch of pink paint uses two cups of red paint and seven cups of white paint. Mai made a large amount of pink paint using 14 cups of red paint. A, how many batches of pink paint did she make? Well, if she used 14 cups of red paint and there's two cups of red paint to start with, then let's make a line. That would be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. She used fourteen cups of red paint, and they were wondering how many batches that would have been. Seven batches. Two cups times seven equals fourteen. So she made seven batches. B. How many cups of white paint did she use? Well, the white paint starts out at seven, and then we count by seven. We started with seven, and we doubled that to 14, then we tripled it to 21, then we times it by four to get to 28, times it by five to get to 35. Seven plus 35 is gonna be 42. And then finally, right here, underneath the 14, we would have 49. So she used 49 cups of white paint. Number five, find three different ratios that are equivalent to three to 11. Well, let's start with a number line with a three and a number line with the 11. We're gonna double the three and get six, double the 11 and get 22. Now triple the three to get nine and triple the 11 to get 33. Now we're gonna to have to multiply that three times four to get 12 and 11 times four to get 44. And they asked us to get three different ratios. And we did. We got 6 to 22, 9 to 33, and 12 to 44. We could write them out like this. 6 to 22, 9 to 33, and, and 12 to 44. B. Explain why your ratios are equivalent. My explanation is right here in this diagram. Number six, here is a diagram that represents the pints of red and yellow paint in a mixture. So there's three pints of red paint and one pint of yellow paint in a mixture. If you increase that at the same rate, you could have three more pints of red paint and one more pint of yellow paint, and you could call that a six to two ratio. You could call that a three to one ratio or a six to two ratio. So let's look at these statements. Select all statements that accurately describe the diagram. A. The ratio of yellow paint to red paint is 2 to 6. Well, we have 2 yellow to 6 red, so that would be yes. For every 3 pints of red paint, there is 1 pint of yellow paint. So for every 3 pints of red, there's 1 pint of yellow. That's true. C. For every pint of yellow paint, there are 3 pints of red. So for every pint of yellow, there's 3 pints of red. That is true. D. For every pint of yellow paint, there are six pints of red paint. That is not true. For every pint of yellow, there's three red. E, the ratio of red paint to yellow paint is six to two. The ratio of red paint to yellow paint is six to two, and that is true. Congratulations. 
You have completed Unit 2, Lesson 7, Creating Double Number Line Diagrams. Unit 2, Lesson 8, How Much for One? Number 1. In 2016, the cost of 2 ounces of pure gold was 2640 Complete the double number line to show the cost for 1, 3, and 4 ounces of gold. 2 ounces of gold was 2640 1 ounce of gold will be half of that. 1 ounce of gold would be half of 2640 1,320. Three ounces of gold would be 1,320 times three, or we could add 1,320 to 2,640. 3,960. And then finally, four ounces of gold would be 1,320 times four, or we would double 2,640, or we could add 1,320 to 3,960. I think I'll just double 2,640. If I were to double 40, I would get 80. And now I'm gonna double this 2,600, so that'd be 5,200. So 5,280 for four ounces. One ounce of gold. 1,320. Two ounces of gold, 2,640. Three ounces of gold, 3,960. Four ounces of gold, 5,280. Number two, the double number line shows that four pounds of tomatoes cost $14. Draw tick marks and write labels to show the price of one, two, and three pounds of tomatoes. Four pounds of tomatoes cost $14. Half of that would be two pounds, and half of 14 would be seven. Between two and four would be three, and exactly between seven and 14. Let's see, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I can find it by going like this. Eliminate that one, eliminate this one, eliminate this one. So it's gonna be somewhere between these two. So we'd have to figure out what that is. So this is seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks like ten and a half or ten dollars fifty cents. So three pounds should be ten dollars fifty cents. Halfway between zero and two would be one, and halfway between zero and seven would be three point five. Or in this case, three dollars and fifty cents. I need to put a decimal here for $10.50. So one pound of tomatoes is $3.50. Two pounds of tomatoes is $7. Three pounds of tomatoes is $10.50. And four pounds of tomatoes is $14. Number three, four movie tickets cost $48. At this rate, what is the cost of A, five movie tickets? One, two, three, four, five. Four movie tickets cost $48. This number line is for the dollars. This number line. Two movie tickets would be half of four. So two movie tickets is going to be half of 48. That would be 24. Two movie tickets is double the price of one. So what number, when you double it, becomes 24? 12. So one movie ticket is $12. So in order to find out what the cost is for five movie tickets, we could do five times 12, or we could just simply add 12 to 48, because 48 is the price for four movie tickets. So that would be 60. Five movie tickets would be $60. B, 11 movie tickets. So we could do the double number line again, but since we figured out the price for one movie ticket was $12, we could simply do 12 times 11. And I already know a trick for multiplying two digit numbers times 11, this digit and this digit, and you rewrite them with a gap in the middle and you add them together. One plus two is three. 
So that's the trick that I know for 11s when multiplied by a two digit number. So 11 times 12 is 132. So you'd have to spend $132 if you wanted to buy 11 movie tickets. Number four, Priya bought these items at the grocery store. Find each unit price. 12 eggs for $3. That's this ratio, 12 to three. I wanna break it down to one egg because they wanna know the cost per egg. So in order to turn this 12 into a one, I'm just gonna divide it by 12. 12 divided by 12 is one. In order to keep the ratio the same, I must divide this side by 12. Three divided by 12 or three twelfths. You know, three twelfths is equivalent to one fourth. And when we're talking about one fourth of a dollar, that's the same as one quarter. So I'm gonna say that one egg costs 25 cents. One egg costs 25 cents. B, three pounds of peanuts for $7.50. How much is the cost per pound? Three pounds for $7.50. We need to get it down to per pound. So we want it to say one pound for a certain amount of money. We don't know what that is yet. Again, to get this three to turn into a one, we need to divide it by itself. Three divided by three equals one. 750 divided by three. $7.50 divided by three is 250. $2.50. We can check it out. Let's test it out. 250 plus 250, that's $5. And then another 250 added to that $5 equals $7.50. C, four rolls of toilet paper for $2. How much is the cost per roll? So we have four rolls for two dollars we want to know what the price is for one roll one roll would cost this much we got to do four divided by four to make this a one and if we did this side divided by four then we must divide this side by four two fourths here's a picture of two fourths right here one fourth two fourths that's the same as one half, one half. You see two divided by two equals one, and four divided by two equals two, one half. So one roll of toilet paper for a half a dollar. What's a half a dollar look like? 50 cents. D, 10 apples for $3.50. How much is the cost per apple? 10 apples for $3.50. 50 cents. We want to know the price for one apple. Divide this by 10. Divide this by 10. I'm just going to move the decimal over once to the left. That makes it 10 times smaller. So now we have the decimal here and the 3 and the 5. We don't need to bring this 0 down here on the end. So this would be represented as one apple for 35 cents. One apple for 35 cents. Number five, Claire made a smoothie with one cup of yogurt, three tablespoons of peanut butter, two teaspoons of chocolate syrup, and two cups of crushed ice. A, Karen tried to double this recipe. He used two cups of yogurt. If you're gonna double the recipe, you need to double, double this, and he did. And you need to double this. And he did. And you'd need to double the two teaspoons of chocolate syrup. But instead of doubling it, he put a little too much because doubling two would be four. He put five teaspoons, that's too much. He doubled the amount of crushed ice and put four cups. When the original amount was two cups, that was correct. But right here is where he made a mistake. He put too much chocolate syrup. He didn't think it tasted right. Describe how the flavor of Kieran's recipe compares to Claire's recipe. The flavor would be more chocolate. It would taste more chocolatey. B. How should Kieran change the quantities that he used so that his smoothie tastes just like Claire's? The only change that he would have to make is he'd have to double that and put four teaspoons of chocolate syrup. 
Number six, a drama club is building a wooden stage in the shape of a trapezoid prison. The height of the stage is two feet. Some measurements of the stage are shown here. What is the area of all the faces of the stage, excluding the bottom? Well, we have this face, which is two by 20. So that is 40 feet squared. We have this face and this face which are the same size. 2 by 13. So the area of these faces are each 26 feet squared. We have this face which is 10 by 2. So that would be 20 feet squared. I'm going to add those up for right now. 40 plus 20 plus 26 plus 26. So I think right now we have 112 feet squared. And then lastly, we have the top of the stage. That's this section here and it's in the shape of a trapezoid. So we need to find the area of this trapezoid. This distance and this distance are different. This distance here is 20 and this distance here is 10. In order to find the distance that we're going to use, we need to add these two distances and then divide them by two. And that's going to give us the distance that's exactly between 20 and 10. Let's use this picture over here, it's better. 10 plus 20 is 30, but we gotta divide that by two. So that would be 15. And they're giving us the height right here. See, the height was 12. So now we gotta do 15 times 12. 15 times 12, five times two is 10. One times two is two, plus one is three. Bring this down as a placeholder. Five times one is five. One times one is one. 30 plus 150 is 180. So this shape here of the stage, the area of this stage is 180 feet squared. This stage is 180 feet squared. Here we had 26, 26, 40, and 20. So 112 feet squared. So 180 plus 112. 292 feet squared. The area equals 292 feet squared. Congratulations, you finished Unit 2, Lesson 8. How much for one? Unit 2, Lesson 9. Number 1. Han ran 10 meters in 2.7 seconds. Priya ran 10 meters in 2.4 seconds. A. Who ran faster? Explain how you know. It took Han 2.7 seconds to complete the 10 meters, and it only took Priya 2.4 seconds. So Priya ran faster. B. At this rate, how long would it take each person to run 50 meters? Explain or show your reasoning. This is 10, this is 10, this represents 10, and that represents 10. Together, it totals 50 meters. So let's do Han first. He runs his at a rate of 2.7 seconds for every 10 meters. So we're gonna have to add 2.7 plus 2.7 plus 2.7 plus 2.7 plus 2.7, or we can do 2.7 times five, since we have it listed here five different times. 2.7 times five. Seven times five, 35. Two times five is 10, plus three is 13. And we're gonna move the decimal over one place. It's gonna take Han 13.5 seconds. So Han runs it in 13.5 seconds. So let's figure out how long it's gonna take Priya. 2.4 times five. 
4 times 5 is 20, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, and we're going to move the decimal over one place, so Priya runs it in 12 seconds. At this rate, Han would run 50 yards at 13.5 seconds. At this rate, Priya would run 50 meters in 12 seconds. Number 2, a scooter travels 30 feet in 2 seconds at a constant speed. A, what is the speed of the scooter in feet per second? One second, two seconds. So if two seconds was 30 feet, so this is two seconds, one second would be half of that, so that would be 15 feet. A, what is the speed of the scooter in feet per second? 15 feet per second. B, complete the double number line to show the distance the scooter traveled after one, three, four, and five seconds. So here we had 15 feet for one second. Way over here, uh, 15 times three or 30 plus 15 is 45, 60. So this tick mark is going to represent four seconds. And then finally, this last tick mark, 60 plus 15 is 75. And that's gonna represent Five feet. So in five seconds, the scooter would go 75 feet. In four seconds, the scooter would go 60 feet. In three seconds, the scooter would go 45 feet. And in just one second, the scooter would go 15 feet. C. A skateboard travels 55 feet in four seconds. Is the skateboard going faster, slower, or the same speed as the scooter? 55 feet in four seconds. The scooter was going 60 feet in four seconds, and the skateboard is traveling 55 feet in four seconds. So the skateboard's not going as far because 55 is less distance than 60. So the skateboard is going slower than the scooter. Three, a cargo ship traveled 150 nautical miles in six hours at a constant speed. How far did the cargo ship travel in one hour? In six hours, the cargo ship traveled 150. I could cut six hours in half and figure out three hours. 150 divided by two is 75. Really, we're just gonna have to go 75 divided by three, and that's gonna give us 25. It reminds me of quarters, right? One quarter is 25 cents. Three quarters is 75 cents. Two quarters is 50 cents. So if I think about coins, it makes it a lot easier. How far did the cargo ship travel in one hour? The cargo ship traveled 25 nautical miles in one hour. Number four, a recipe for pasta dough says use 150 grams of flour per large egg. So one egg to 150 grams of flour. A. How much flour is needed if six large eggs are used? So if the ratio is 150 grams of flour to one egg, then six eggs, that's six times more. So what's, what's six times more than 150? We need to multiply 150 times six. Zero times six is zero. Five times six is 30. One times six is six, plus three is nine. So we're talking 900 grams of flour if we use six eggs. How many eggs are needed if 450 grams of flour are used? 150 plus 150. By the way, this is one egg here, another egg here. So that's 300. So with 300, you would use two eggs. If we were to add 150 more grams of flour, we would end up with 450. If we added 150 more grams of flour, that would mean that we need to add one more egg. So if we added one more egg to the two eggs, we would have a total of three eggs. Number five, the grocery store is having a sale on frozen vegetables. Four bags are sold for 11.96. At this rate, what is the cost of of one bag. So to turn four bags into one bag, we really just need to divide the four bags by four. 
So let this be the number of bags and let this be the cost. 11, 96, and four bags. Four divided by four equals one. So 11, 96 divided by four will tell us how much one bag is sold for. 11, 96 divided by four. How many times does four go into 11? Twice, two times four equals eight. 11 minus eight is three. Bring down the nine and bring up this decimal point. How many times does four go into 39? Nine times, nine times four is 36. 39 minus 36 is three. Bring down the six. How many times does four go into 36? That goes in an even nine times, and nine times four is 36. So we have no remainder, so we're done. So we know that 299 is the cost for one bag of frozen vegetables. So if one bag of frozen vegetables cost $2.99, then nine bags would be nine times larger than $2.99. $2.99 times nine. Nine times nine is 81. Nine times nine is 81 plus eight is 89. Two times nine is 18. 18 plus eight is 26. Move the decimal over two places. $26.91. So nine bags would be $26.91. $26.91. Number six, a pet owner has five cats. Each cat has two ears and four paws. A, complete the double number line to show the number of ears and paws for one, two, three, four, and five cats. One, two, three, four, five cats. So, the number of ears on zero cats is zero. The number of ears on one cat is two. The number of ears on two cats is four. So up here, we're just increasing each by one, but down here, we're increasing each by two. So we go zero to two, two to four, four to six, and then six to eight. For five cats, that would be 10 ears. So two, four, six, eight, 10. The number of paws. So the number of paws on each cat is four. So if there's zero cats, there's zero paws. If there's one cat, there would be four paws. So down here, we're increasing by one. So zero to one, one to two, two to three, three cats to four cats, four cats to five cats. So for one cat, there'd be four paws. Two cats, there would be eight paws. Three cats, there would be 12 paws. So up here, we're increasing by four. So we go zero, four, eight, 12. That's 12 plus four, 16. And then finally, 16 plus four would be 20. B. If there are three cats in a room, what is the ratio of ears to paws? So three cats, there'd be six ears, and three cats, there would be 12 paws. So six ears to 12 paws. The ratio of ears to paws for three cats would be six to 12. C, if there are four cats in the room, what is the ratio of paws to ears with four cats? Paws to ears. Four cats, that would be 16 paws. 16 paws on four cats. And four cats would have eight ears. Four cats would have eight ears. So the ratio of paws to ears on four cats is 16 to eight. D, if all five cats are in the room, how many more paws are there than ears? How many more paws are there than ears? If there are five cats in the room, so there's 20 paws to 10 ears. But they wanted to know how many more paws were there. So I'm gonna do 20 ears minus 10 paws. So there'd be 10 more paws than ears. There'd be 10 more. 
paws than ears. Number seven. Each of these is a pair of equivalent ratios. For each pair, explain why they are equivalent ratios or draw a representation that shows why they are equivalent ratios. A, five to one and 15 to three. So let's start out with 5 to 1, 10 to 2, 15 to 3. So down here we're increasing by 1, up here we're counting by 5s. 5. 5 to 1, 10 to 2, 15 to 3. These are equivalent ratios. B, 25 to 5, and 10 to 2. So 25 to 5. So 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Which would mean that this one would be 5 to 1. So up here, it looks like we're counting by 5s. And down here, we're counting by 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4. So up here, we get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So 10 to 2 is an equivalent ratio as 25 to 5. C. 198 to 1,287. compared to 2 to 13. Why are they equivalent? If we were to increase 2 to become 198, we'd have to multiply it by 99 because 2 times 99 equals 198. If we were to increase 13 to become 1,287, we'd have to multiply it by 99 because 13 times 99 equals 1,287. So I guess if you wanted to explain how the ratios 2 to 13 are related to 198 to 1,287 is that these numbers are multiplied by 99 to get these numbers. And that shows they are equivalent ratios. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 2, Lesson 9, Constant Speed. Unit 2, Lesson 10. Comparing situations by examining ratios. Number 1. A slug travels 3 centimeters in 3 seconds. A snail travels 6 centimeters in 6 seconds. Both travel at constant speeds. Mai says the snail was traveling faster because it went a greater distance. Do you agree with Mai? Explain or show your reasoning. No, I don't agree. The slug traveled 3 centimeters in 3 seconds. That's a 3 to 3 ratio. The snail traveled 6 centimeters in 6 seconds. That's a 6 to 6 ratio. These are actually equivalent ratios. This land represents seconds. This land represents centimeters. One centimeter, one second. Two centimeters, two seconds. Three centimeters, three seconds. Four, five, six. Six centimeters, six seconds. They are equivalent ratios. The slug and the snail were traveling at the same rate. Number two, if you blend two scoops of chocolate ice cream with one cup of milk, you get a milkshake with a stronger chocolate flavor than if you blend three scoops of chocolate ice cream with two cups of milk. Explain or show why. Two scoops of chocolate ice cream with one scoop of milk. That's a two to one ratio compared to three scoops of chocolate ice cream with two cups of milk. Three to two. So in this case right here, you have twice as much ice cream than you do milk. That's going to make the ice cream much stronger. In this case, it's not twice as much. It's one and a half times as much. So it's not going to be as strong. 2 to 1 compared to a 3 to 2, which is the same as a 1 and a half to 1. So when you compare a 1 and a half to 1 with a 2 to 1, it shows that the 2 to 1 had more ice cream. Number 3. There are two mixtures of light purple paint. Mixture A is made with 5 cups of purple paint and 2 cups of white paint. It's 5 to 2. Mixture B is made with 15 cups of purple paint and 8 cups of white paint. Which which mixture is a lighter shade of purple? At the 5 to 2 ratio, you would end up with 15 cups of purple paint to 6 cups of white paint. So with 6 cups of white paint, 
mixed with 15 cups of purple paint, you would actually have a darker shade than you would with 15 cups of purple paint mixed with eight cups of white paint. This would be the lighter shade. Mixture B is the lighter shade. Number four, tulip bulbs are on sale at store A, five for $11. And the regular price at store B is six for $13. Is each store pricing tulip bulbs at the same rate? Explain how you know. I'm gonna say no to 11 ratio. That's store A. Store B is a six to 13 ratio. Store A sells tulips at a rate of one to two and one fifth, and store B has a ratio of one to two and one sixth. Number five, a plane travels at a constant speed. It takes six hours to travel 3,360 miles. A, what is the plane's speed in miles per hour? They're asking about one hour. So we need to change the six hours to one hour. Currently, it's a six to 3,360 ratio. Six divided by six equals one. And 3,360 divided by six. How many times does six go into 33? Five times. Five times six is 30. 33 minus 30 is three. Bring down the six. That's gonna be six. Six times six. 6 is 36. Bring down the 0. How many times does 6 go to 0? Zero? 0 times. So it's a 1 to 560, which means 1 hour it goes 560 miles. 560 miles per hour. B. At this rate, how many miles can it travel in 10 hours? In one hour, it goes 560 miles. So in 10 hours, we need a number 10 times bigger. So it can go 5,600 miles in 10 hours. Number six. A pound of ground beef costs $5. At this rate, what is the cost of three pounds? If one pound is $5, then three pounds would be three times five, so that would be $15. A half a pound, if one pound is $5, then a half a pound would be exactly between $0 and $5, $2.50. A half a pound would be $2.50 and 50 cents. C, one fourth of a pound. Zero, zero, one and five. So we have the dollars down here and the pounds up here. This represents a half a pound. That is $2 and 50 cents. A fourth of a pound exactly between a half a pound and zero pounds. So what's halfway between $2 and 50 cents? $1 25 cents. So a fourth of a pound would be $1 25 cents. Three fourths of a pound. Well, that's going to be three times greater than one fourth of a pound. So one dollar twenty-five cents times three going to be three dollars seventy-five cents. Three and three fourths of a pound. Three pounds would be five dollars times three. So that's fifteen dollars plus three-fourths of a pound. So the price for three-fourths of a pound, zero, one, five dollars, a half is two fifty, a fourth, a fourth is a dollar twenty-five, so three-fourths is three seventy-five. Fifteen dollars plus three seventy-five equals eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents a pound. $18.75 for three and three-fourths pounds. Number seven, in a triple batch of spice mix, there are six teaspoons of garlic powder, 
15 teaspoons of salt. So this is a triple batch. Answer the following questions about the mix. If you get stuck, create a double number line. How much garlic is used with five teaspoons of salt? With 15 teaspoons of salt, there's six teaspoons of garlic. In order to make 15 teaspoons of salt turn into five teaspoons of salt, we need to divide it by three. So six teaspoons of garlic divided by three would equal two. Two teaspoons of garlic powder with every five teaspoons of salt. B, how much salt is used with eight teaspoons of garlic powder? Six divided by six equals one. Fifteen divided by six. Two and three six is the same as two and a half. So for every one teaspoon of garlic powder, there's two and a half teaspoons of salt. So this represents garlic powder, this represents salt. So it's a one to two and a half ratio. A one to two and a half ratio. So if we're gonna have eight teaspoons of garlic powder, that means we needed to multiply the one by eight. Now we need to multiply the two and a half times eight. Two times eight is 16. Half of eight is four. 16 plus four is 20. So there would be 20 teaspoons, 20 teaspoons of salt to every eight teaspoons of garlic powder. C, if there are 14 teaspoons of spice mix, how much salt is in it? So you got garlic and you got salt. So we're looking for a total of 14 teaspoons of spice mix. So that's gonna be the sum of the garlic and the salt together. So this amount of garlic plus this amount of spice mix needs to equal 14 teaspoons. One times four to get four, and two and a half times four, that's gonna get me four times two is eight, plus half of four is two, eight plus two is 10. When there are 14 teaspoons of spice mix, there are 10 teaspoons of salt. So when there are 14 teaspoons of spice mix, 10 of those teaspoons are salt. D, how much more salt is there than garlic powder if six teaspoons of garlic powder are used? One, oh, so this is garlic powder, this is salt, to two and a half, we figured that out. Two to five, three to seven and a half, four to ten, five to twelve and a half, six to fifteen. For every six teaspoons of garlic powder, there are fifteen teaspoons of salt. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 2, Lesson 10, Comparing Situations by Examining Ratios. Unit 2, Lesson 11, representing ratios with tables. Number 1. Complete the table to show the amounts of yellow and red paint needed for different sized batches of the same shade of orange paint. Explain how you know that these amounts of yellow paint and red paint will make the same shade of orange as the mixture in the first row of the table. I'm simply going to count by fives. 5, 10, 15, and 20. And on this side I'm going to count by 6. 6, 12, 18, and 24. My explanation is simply that the 5 to 6 ratio is an equivalent ratio to 10 to 12 for example because we just doubled the 5 to get 10 and doubled the 6 to get 12. We could do the same thing for each of these. Triple the 5 to get 15, triple the 6 to get 18, and quadruple the 5 to get 20, quadruple the 6 to get 24. They're all equivalent ratios. Number two, a car travels at a constant speed as shown on the double number line. How far does the car travel in 14 hours? Explain your reasoning. So we wanna know how far the car travels in 14 hours. I'm gonna take this information because I know that two times seven is going to give me 14 hours. And since I multiplied the two times seven, I have to multiply the 140 times seven. 140 times seven. 
980, 980 kilometers. The car will travel in 14 hours, 980 kilometers. My explanation is there. Number three, the olive trees in an orchard produce 3,000 pounds of olives a year. It takes 20 pounds of olives to make three liters of olive oil. How many liters of olive oil can this orchard produce in a year? If you get stuck, consider using the table. Number four, at a school recess, there needs to be a ratio of two adults for every 24 children on the playground. The double number line represents the number of adults and children on the playground at recess. A. Label each remaining tick mark with its value. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. 0, 24, 48. So we're just counting by 24. So I have to add 24 to this number. That's going to give me 72 and 96. B. How many adults are needed if there are 72 children? Circle your answer on the double number line. Number of children, 72. So we would need six adults for 72 children during recess. Number five, while playing basketball, Jada's heart rate goes up to 160 beats per minute. While jogging, her heart beats 25 times in 10 seconds. Assuming her heart beats at a consistent rate while jogging, which of these activities results in a higher heart rate? Explain your reasoning. 160 beats per minute. That's the same thing as 60 seconds. So 160 beats in 60 seconds. 25 beats in 10 seconds. Let's turn this 10 into 60. So we have an unknown amount of beats in 60 seconds, which is the same thing as one minute. So 10 times 6 equals 60. So we're going to have to multiply 25 times 6. 25 times 6 equals 150. So let's compare this heart rate. 160 beats per minute compared to 150 beats per minute. Her heart rate is higher when she's playing basketball. Number six, a shopper bought the following items at the farmer's market. A, six ears of corn for $1.80. What was the cost per ear? If six ears of corn cost $1.80, then one ear of corn costs 30 cents. B, 12 apples for 288. What was the cost per apple? 12 apples for 288. What's the cost per apple? 288 divided by 12. How many times does 12 go into 28? That's two. Two times 12 is 24. Uh, how many times does 12 go into 48? Four, four times two is eight. Four times one is four. We have zero as the remainder. Each apple costs 24 cents. C, five tomatoes for $3.10. What was the cost per tomato? If five tomatoes were $3.10, then 10 tomatoes would be $6.20. Five times two is 10. $3.10 times two is $6.20. And if 10 tomatoes was $6.20, then one tomato is going to be 62 cents. So the price of one tomato is 62 cents. Let's double check. 310? divided by five. And we think the answer is 62, or 62 cents. Let's check. 
How many times does 5 go into 3? 0. How many times does 5 go into 31? 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 31 minus 30 is 1. Bring down the 0. How many times does 5 go into 10? Twice. 2 times 5 is 10. So we have no remainder, which means we're done. 62 cents. Congratulations, you have completed Unit 2, Lesson 11, Representing Ratios with Tables. Unit 2, Lesson 12, Navigating a Table of Equivalent Ratios. Number 1. Priya collected 2,400 grams of pennies in a fundraiser. Each penny has a mass of 2.5 grams. How much money did Priya raise? If you get stuck, consider using the table. So if one penny is equivalent to 2.5 grams, 10 pennies would be equivalent to 25 grams. And how I did that, there's an imaginary decimal point right there. And if I'm going to turn a 1 into a 10, it really means that I'm scooting the decimal point over one place, one place over to the right to make it 10 times larger, I'd need to do it here too. So if I scooted it over here, it becomes a 25. I could follow that same pattern and make it 100, 10 times larger than the 10. Multiply by 10. 10 times 10 equals 100. We need to do that over here. 25 times 10, really, we're just scooting the decimal place over and it becomes 250. And we can do that again. Move this decimal place over, it becomes 1,000, making it 10 times bigger than 100. And we can do that on this side too. Make this 10 times bigger, it becomes 2,500. So now we have some information that we can use. We have the number of pennies, and we have the mass in grams. The mass in grams that we're looking for is 2,400. If 1,000 pennies equals 2,500 grams, then how many pennies equals 2,400 grams? 2,400 equals how many pennies? Well, this one's too large, 2,500, so we'll get rid of this one. But we can use this. We can count by 250. Number two, Kieran reads five pages in 20 minutes. He spends the same amount of time per page. How long will it take him to read 11 pages? If you get stuck, consider using the table. 20 to five. Five multiplied by its reciprocal gets you to one. So five times one fifth equals one, or five divided by five equals one. So we need to divide this side by five. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. So the ratio of 20 to 5 is equal to the ratio of 4 to 1. 1 times 11 equals 11. So 4 times 11 is going to equal 44. So in 44 minutes, Kieran can read 11 pages. In 4 minutes, Kieran reads 1 page. And in 20 minutes, Kieran reads 5 pages. Number 3. Mai is making personal pizzas. For 4 pizzas, she uses 10 ounces of cheese. 
four pizzas, 10 ounces of cheese. So I know that two pizzas would be half of that, so that'd be five ounces. Half of two is one, and half of five is 2.5. So these are pizzas, and these are ounces of cheese. So for every one pizza, she uses 2.5 ounces of cheese. A. How much cheese does my use per pizza? We figured that out already, so we could go right here. 4 to 10, 2 to 5, and 1 to 2.5 just like we did here. We had four to 10 at the bottom, and here we have four to 10 at the top, it doesn't matter. 2.5 ounces of cheese per pizza. B, at this rate, how much cheese will she need to make 15 pizzas? 10 pizzas, that would be 10 times bigger than one, so she would use 10 times more cheese. Instead of 2.5 ounces, it would be 25 ounces, because we moved the decimal over one place to make it 10 times larger. So 10 pizzas would equal 25 ounces of cheese. Well, this was for 10. We need to find out for 15, so we need 15 pizzas. Well, we know that 10 is 25, What's half of 10? Five. So if we add these together, 10 plus five, we're gonna get 15. So what's half of 25? 12.5. Five plus two is seven, two plus one is three. So for 15 pizzas, it's gonna take 37.5 ounces. 37.5 ounces of cheese. We could always test that out by taking one and multiplying it by 15 and taking 25 ounces and multiplying that by 15. So one times 15 gets you to 15 pizzas and 25 times 15 will get you to the amount of cheese needed for 15 pizzas. Five times five is 25, two times five is 10, plus two is 12. 5 times 1 is 5, 2 times 1 is 2, 5, 7, 3, 375. Oh, and this was a decimal. This should have been 2.5. So we're really multiplying it by 2.5, which means we need to make our answer 10 times smaller. So we have 37.5, 37.5. So to answer B, 37.5 ounces of cheese for every 15 pizzas. Number four, Claire is paid $900 for five hours of work. At this rate, how many seconds does it take for her to earn 25 cents? First, let's figure out what she's going to be paid for one hour of work. So we have a ratio of $90 to five hours of work. Let's just make that now one hour of work. So what did we do to the five to make it one hour? Dividing it by five. Five divided by five brings me to one. We need to do 90 divided by five. Let's do that now. 90 divided by five. How many times does five go into nine? Once. One times five is five, or left over, bring down the zero. How many times does five go into 40? Eight. Eight times five is exactly 40. We have no remainder and nothing left to bring down, so that would be 18. 18. So it looks like it's $18 for one hour. $18 for every one hour. So remember, they're asking us how many seconds does it take to earn 25 cents? I'm going to break this hour down into minutes. One hour is 60 minutes. So it's $18 for every 60 minutes. How many seconds are in one minute? 60. So let's multiply this by 60 and we'll know how many seconds we're talking about. So this answer down here will be seconds. Zero times zero is zero. Six times zero is zero. Placeholder, zero times six is zero. Six times six is 36. So when we're talking about seconds, we're talking about 3,600 seconds. So 3,600 seconds. 3,600 seconds. For $18, 
that's the same as one hour. 3,600 seconds should be the same as one hour. And in one hour, Claire is paid $18. They're talking about 25 cents. That's the same as one quarter. One quarter is 25 cents. So how many quarters in one dollar? One dollar equals four quarters. To earn 25 cents, Claire would have to work for 50 seconds. It would take Claire 50 seconds to earn 25 cents. Number five, a car that travels 20 miles in one half hour at constant speed is traveling at the same speed as a car that travels 30 miles in three fourths hour at a constant speed. Explain or show why. This is miles and this is hour. Let's put our 20 miles here and our half hour here. Since they talked about three fourths, we can put our three fourths below the half because we know that a half is the same as two fourths. And then above the half, we would just have one fourth. One fourth is half of a half. So what is half of 20? 10. So for every one fourth of an hour, it travels 10 miles. So really in the miles section, we're counting by tens. So here where it says miles, we're gonna count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40. And over here in the hours section, we're counting by quarter of an hour, which is really 15 minutes, but we're listing it as a quarter of an hour. One quarter, two quarters, which is the same as one half. One half plus another quarter equals three quarters. Let me say it like this. One quarter, two quarter, three quarter, and then finally four quarters, which is the same as one whole hour. So to find or to prove that it goes 30 miles in three-fourths of an hour, 
we can use this chart. Number six, Lynn makes her favorite juice blend by mixing cranberry juice with apple juice in the ratio shown on the double number line. Complete the diagram to show smaller and larger batches that would taste the same as Lynn's favorite blend. We want it to taste the same as Lynn's favorite blend. So nine divided by three would be three. So it looks like we're counting by threes. Zero to three, three to six, three to six, six to nine, nine to 12, 12 to 15. Apple juice. 21 divided by three is going to be seven. So it looks like they're counting by seven. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35. So here's some smaller and larger batches that would taste exactly the same. A three to seven ratio of cranberry juice to apple juice, a six to 14 ratio, a nine to 21 ratio, a 12 to 28 ratio, and a 15 to 35 ratio. Number seven, each of these is a pair of equivalent ratios. For each pair, explain why they are equivalent ratios or draw a representation that shows why they are equivalent ratios. A. I like this one because it's using the same digits. It uses this six and the zero right here, and it uses the four and the five right here. So really we just made 600 10 times smaller by moving the decimal over. And we made the 450 10 times smaller by moving the decimal over. 60 is exactly 10 times smaller than 600 and 45 is exactly 10 times smaller than 450. B, 60 to 45 and four to three. Sixty and forty-five are both divisible by three. Sixty divided by three is twenty, and forty-five divided by three is fifteen, and even these are divisible by five. So twenty divided by five is four, and fifteen divided by five is three. So we have just proved that sixty to forty-five is an equivalent ratio as four to three. 60 to 45, 20 to 15, 4 to 3. These are all equivalent ratios. C, 600 to 450 and 4 to 3. I know that both these numbers are divisible by 3. 600 divided by 3 is 200. 450 divided by 3 is 150. Both these numbers are divisible by 50. 200 divided by 50 is 4. And 150 divided by 50 is 3. So we've just proved that 600 to 450 is equivalent to 4 to 3. 600 to 450, 200 to 150, 4 to 3. They're all equivalent ratios. Congratulations, you've just completed Lesson 2, Unit 12, Navigating a Table of Equivalent Ratios. Unit 2, Lesson 13, Tables and Double Number Line Diagrams. Number 1, the double number line shows how much water and how much lemonade powder to mix to make different amounts of lemonade. 2 cups of water to 1.5 scoops of lemonade powder. 4 cups of water to 3 lemonade powder scoops. 6 cups of water to 4.5 scoops of lemonade powder. Make a table that represents the same situation. The column on the left represents water. The column on the right represents the number of scoops. 2 to 1.5. 5, 4 to 3, 6 to 4.5. Number 2. A bread recipe uses 3 tablespoons of olive oil for every 2 cloves of crushed garlic. A. 
Complete the table to show different sized batches of bread that taste the same as the recipe. We need to keep the ratio of three tablespoons of olive oil to two cloves of crushed garlic. So here's the original, three to two. And then here when they made the three into a one, three divided by three brings you to one. So two divided by three is the same thing as two thirds. So it would be one to two thirds. Well, if one equals two thirds, then two would be be doubled two-thirds and double two-thirds is four thirds which is equal to four divided by three how many times does three go into four once one times three is three four minus three is one so your remainder is one over three one over three I'm going to jump down to the 10 because the 10 is going to be 10 times bigger than 1. So what's 10 times bigger than 2 thirds? 20 thirds. And remember, that means 20 divided by 3. How many times does 3 go into 20? 6. 6 times 3 is 18. And what do you have left over? 2. So 2 over 3. So that's going to be 6 and 2 thirds. The next one I'm going to do is 5 because five is half of 10. So this answer right here is gonna be half the size of this answer. What is half of six? Three. What is half of two thirds or half of two? One. So half of two thirds is one third. Another way that we could have done this, we could have multiplied one times five to get five and this the number of scoops times five to get three and one third. B. Draw a double number line that represents the same situation. I'm going to start with zero and then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this one here is going to be ten. With one tablespoon of olive oil, there's two thirds crushed garlic. So two thirds. So when there's two, there's one and one third. One and one third. When there's five, there's three and one third. Three and one third. And then finally, when there's ten, there's six and two thirds. One to two thirds. Two to one. One and one third, five to three and one third, ten to six and two thirds. C. Which representation do you think works better in this situation? Why? I preferred the table because it was easy for me to recognize the relationship between 10 and 1. The 10 is going to be 10 times larger than the 1. Also, the 5 is going to be half the size of 10. 3. Claire travels at a constant speed, as shown on the double number line. At this rate, how far does she travel in each of these intervals of time? Explain or show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider using a table. Here's the distance in miles, and here is the elapsed time in hours. A. How far does she travel in one hour? One hour is missing, but they provide us with two hours. If she goes 72 miles in two hours, all we have to do is cut that in half and we have the distance for one hour. 72 divided by 2 equals 36. 36 miles in one hour. Three hours is just going to be 36 times 3, or the exact middle between 72 and 144 this space right here between 72 and 144. 144 plus 72. 216. Now we need to find the average between these two numbers, so we divide this by 2. 216 divided by 2. Half of 2 is 1, or half of 200 is 100. Half of 16 is 8. 108. In three hours, 108 miles would be traveled. 108 should be the same answer as 36 times 3. Let's test that out. 6 times 3 is 18. 3 times 3 is 9. Plus 1 is 10. 108. C. 6.5 hours. Let's make a chart. Hours, miles. 2 hours, 72 miles. 1 hour, 36 miles. 
So basically we're counting by 36. 36, 72, 108, 144, 144 plus 36. Five to 180. Six to 216. Seven to 252. C was asking for 6.5 hours, which is six and a half hours. That would be the amount that's exactly between six hours and seven hours. So we'd have to find the amount that's exactly between 216 and 252. So instead of adding 36 to 216 to get 252, we could add half of 36. Half of 36 is 18. So if we were to add 18 to 216, we could get the answer. Or we could add 216 to 252 and divide that answer by two, and we should be able to get the answer. 234, 234, 234 to 6.5. Number four, Lynn and Diego traveled in cars on the highway at constant speeds. In each case, decide who was traveling faster and explain how you know. During the first half hour, Lynn travels 23 miles while Diego travels 25 miles. Hour, miles. During the first half hour, Lynn traveled 23 miles. Lynn on the left, Diego on the right. In the first half hour, Diego traveled 25 miles. Since 25 miles is greater than 23 miles, Diego traveled faster because he traveled a further distance in the same amount of time. B. After stopping for lunch, they traveled at different speeds. To travel the next 60 miles, it takes Lynn 65 minutes and it takes Diego 70 minutes. 60 miles. So they each traveled 60 miles. And then they changed this from hours to minutes. I changed it in the graph from hours to minutes, like they did. So the half hour becomes 30 minutes. Lynn takes 65 minutes to travel 60 miles and Diego takes 70 minutes to travel 60 miles. So after lunch, Lynn was traveling faster because in a shorter amount of time he traveled the same distance as Diego. It took Lynn only 65 minutes to travel 60 miles and it took Diego 70 minutes to travel 60 miles. Number five, a sports drink recipe calls for five thirds tablespoons of powdered drink mix for every 12 ounces of water. How many batches can you make with five tablespoons of drink mix and 36 ounces of water? Explain your reasoning. In this chart, I have the drink mix on the left and the amount of ounces of water on the right. Ounces of water I counted by 12, 12, 24, 36. Once I got to 36, I stopped because they were asking how many batches could we make with 36 ounces of water. The drink mix side, I'm gonna count by five thirds. Five thirds, 10 thirds, 15 thirds. 15 thirds really means 15 divided by three. Five, five tablespoons, of drink mix to 36 ounces of water. This represents the first batch, the second batch, and the third batch. 36 ounces of water and five tablespoons of drink mix would make three batches of sports drink. 5A. What is the surface area of this cube? 
three by three. Three times three is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each side is worth nine. On a cube, there's a top, a bottom, a front, a back, a right side, and a left side. One, two, three, four, five, six times nine. Six times nine equals six less than six times 10. I know six times 10 is 60. 60 minus six is 54. So six times nine should be 54. And these are units squared, 54 square units. The area is 54 units squared. B, what is the volume of this cube? Volume equals base times height times length. Three times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27 units cubed. The volume of the cube is 27 cubic units, or 27 units cubed, or 27 units to the third power. How many floors or how many stories or how many levels do you see in this cube? There's three. The top level has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this top level has nine. The middle level also has nine. The bottom level also has nine. Nine times three or nine plus nine plus nine equals 27. So you have 27 cubed units inside this cube. That's another way to look at it. Congratulations. You have completed Unit 2, Lesson 13, Tables and Double Number Line Diagrams. Unit 2, Lesson 14, Solving Equivalent Ratio Problems. A chef is making pickles. He needs 15 gallons of vinegar. The store sells 2 gallons of vinegar for $3 and allows customers to buy any amount of vinegar. Decide whether each of the following ratios correctly represents the price of vinegar. He needs 15 gallons of vinegar. Two gallons of vinegar is $3. And if two gallons of vinegar is $3, then one gallon of vinegar would be $1.50. A. Four gallons to $3. No, that's not true because we know it's two gallons to $3. B, one gallon to a dollar fifty. Yep, we know that's true. C, 30 gallons to $45. Well, let's multiply one times 30 to make 30 gallons. And then let's multiply a dollar fifty times thirty to see if it gives us forty-five. Zero times zero is zero. Five times zero is zero. One times zero is zero. Placeholder. Zero times three is zero. Five times three is fifteen. One times three plus one is four. So there's the thirty to forty-five. So we know that's true. So D, $2 to 30 gallons. No, that's not even gonna be close. If it's $1.50 per gallon, so $1.50 for one gallon, then there's no way you're gonna get 30 gallons for $2. So if we double this one gallon, if we multiply one times 30, one times 30 to get 30 gallons, then we'd have to multiply $1.50 times 30. And that's going to get us 45. So, in fact, right here, C says 30 gallons is $45. So we know that D can't be correct. 30 gallons can't be for $2. E, $1 to two-thirds gallon. In order to change $3 to $1, we'd have to divide the three dollars by three so let's divide two by three well another way to do two divided by three would be two over three so two-thirds gallon is one dollar number two a caterer needs to buy 21 pounds of pasta to cater a wedding at a local store eight pounds of pasta cost twelve dollars how much will the caterer pay for the pasta there? How much will the caterer pay for pasta? So right now we know it's eight pounds for $12. So I'm gonna divide this by eight and get one. So one pound, divide this by eight, is $1.50. So one pound for $1.50. 
50. I'm gonna write that down here for B because they ask us about that. One to a dollar fifty. So a dollar fifty times twenty-one pounds. $31.50, $31.50. How much will the caterer pay for the pasta there? At that store, the caterer would pay $31.50 for 21 pounds of pasta. A, write a ratio for the given information about the cost of pasta. One pound for $1.50 or 21 pounds for $31.50. B. Would it be more helpful to write an equivalent ratio with one pound of pasta as one of the numbers or with one dollar as one of the numbers? Explain your reasoning and then write that equivalent ratio. I think that it's more helpful to write the pound as one so that you could multiply the pound times any number. For example, if we needed 21 pounds of pasta, we would just multiply 21 times the price per pound. So 21 times $1.50, and that will get you your answer, which is what we did. C, find the answer and explain or show your reasoning. Well, we already found the answer. The answer is $31.50 and it's because he's buying 21 pounds for $31.50, which is the same rate as one pound for $1.50. So if one pound costs $1.50, then 21 pounds would cost $31.50. Number three, Lynn is reading a 47 page book. She read the first 20 pages in 35 minutes. 20 pages in 35 minutes. So this is minutes and this is pages. A, if she continues to read at the same rate, will she be able to complete this book in under one hour? So the book has 47 pages. If we doubled the amount that she has already read, which is 20 pages, that would be 40 pages and that would be short of 47, so she wouldn't finish the book yet. And if we doubled 35 minutes, that would be 70 minutes. And 70 minutes is more than one hour. So the answer to A is no. B, if so, how much time will she have left? If not, how much more time is needed? Explain or show your reasoning. Let's see how long it takes you to read one page. One page in one and 15 twentieths which is one divide 15 by 5 is 3 then divide 20 by 5 and that's going to be 4 one and three fourths of a minute that's the same thing as one minute and 7500 so 1.75 times 47 this will tell us how many how many minutes. So this will give us the minutes. Five times seven is 35. Seven times seven is 49 plus three is 52. One times seven is seven plus five is 12. Placeholder. Five times four is 20. Seven times four is 28 plus two is 30. One times four is four plus three is seven. Scoot the decimal over twice. So 82.25. So that's 82 and one quarter minutes, which is the same thing as 82 minutes and 15 seconds. 82 minutes and 15 seconds. How much more time is needed? 82.25. And if an hour expired, let's see how much time would be left over that they would still need. Twenty two point two five. So they'd still need twenty two and a quarter minutes. Needs twenty two and a quarter minutes. 
All the math that I showed was my explanation. Number four. Diego can type 140 words in four minutes. At this rate, how long will it take him to type 385 words? First, I want to figure out how many words Diego can type in one minute. 140 words to four minutes is the same as... See, I divided the four by four to get one, so now I need to divide 140 by four. Thirty-five words a minute. So we need to see how many times thirty-five goes into three hundred eighty-five. Thirty-five words in one minute. Let's try a chart. Thirty-five to one minute. So two minutes is going to be double thirty-five, which is seventy. Because I doubled the 2 to get 4, now I'm going to double 70 to get 140. If I double the 4, I get 8, so that's 8 minutes. 140 doubled is 280. And they're asking about 385. Let's try to get close to that. Let's add 70 to 280 to get 350. And if I added 70 pages, then I need to add two minutes. So two minutes added eight would be 10. And then I think now we could get 385 down here by adding 35. So add 35 to 350 is 385. And we need to add one to 10, that would be 11. So it's gonna take us 11 minutes to type 385 words. So it's gonna be 11 minutes for A. B, how many words can he type in 15 minutes? So if we just kept on doing this, I can add four to 11, and that would give us 15 minutes. And if I'm adding the four to the 11, I need to add the 140 to 385. So 140 plus 385. 525. In 15 minutes, I think he could type 525 words. Number five. A train that travels 30 miles in one third hour at a constant speed is going faster than a train that travels 20 miles in a half hour at a constant speed. Explain or show why. 30 miles in one third hour compared to 20 miles in one half hour. So let's just see what this would be in one hour. So one third multiplied by three gets me to one hour. So I need to multiply 30 times three. 30 times three is 90. Let's make the half into an hour. And I multiplied one half times two to make one hour. So I need to multiply the 20 times two. And 20 times two 40. So the train that travels 30 miles in one third hour can go 90 miles in one hour. And the train that's only going 20 miles in a half hour is just going 40 miles in one hour. Number six, find the surface area of the polyhedron that can be assembled from this net. Show your reasoning. Eight by 12. Eight by 12. And there's two of them, one here and one here. And since they're triangles, it's half of eight by 12. Half of eight by 12. Half of eight by 12, because there's two of them. Here's a rectangle that's four by 12. Four by 12. Here's a rectangle that's four by 10. Four by 10. And another rectangle that's four by 10. Four by 10.
48 plus 48, that's 96. 40 plus 40 is 80. 96 plus 80. 96 plus 80. 176. So this is 176. So we need to add 176 to 48. So the area is 224 inches squared. We added this rectangle, this rectangle, this rectangle, this triangle, and this triangle. And we got the area was 224 inches squared. Congratulations, you finished Unit 2, Lesson 14, Solving Equivalent Ratio Problems. Unit 2, Lesson 15, Part Part Whole Ratios. Number 1. Here is a tape diagram representing the ratio of red paint to yellow paint in a mixture of orange paint. A. What is the ratio of yellow paint to red paint? It looks like a ratio of two yellow, three red. B, how many total cups of orange paint will this mixture yield? These are cups. This represents three cups. And these are cups, and this represents three cups. So yellow, there's a total of six cups, plus red, nine cups. This is going to yield 15 cups of orange paint. 15 cups of orange paint will be yielded with this mixture. Number two, at the kennel, the ratio of cats to dogs is four to five. There are 27 animals in all. Here is a tape diagram representing this ratio. One, two, three, four. That's four cats, one, two, three, four, five. That represents five dogs, but the total needs to be 27. Let's try three. Three, six, nine, 12. Pretend that there's 12 cats. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. And let's pretend that there's 15 dogs. Let's add this up. 2 plus 5 is 7, 1 plus 1 is 2, 27. What is the value of each small rectangle? The value for each small rectangle is 3. How many dogs are at the kennel? This represents the number of dogs at the kennel. So there's 15 dogs. How many cats are at the kennel? This represents the number of cats. There are 12 cats. 15 dogs, 12 cats. Last month, there were four sunny days for every rainy day. If there were 30 days in a month, how many days were rainy? Explain your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider using a tape diagram. One, two, three, four. These are all sunny. And then finally, you have a day that's rainy. This is a total of one, two, three, four, and five. So in these five days, one of them is rainy, four of them are sunny. So the question is, there's 30 days. Well, that means that we're gonna have six things exactly like this, because six times five is 30. Six times four sunny days, plus six times one rainy day. Six times four is 24 sunny days plus six times one is six rainy days. So every 30 days, there would be 24 sunny days and six rainy days. Number four, Noah entered a 100 mile bike race. He knows he can ride 32 miles in 160 minutes. 32 miles in 160 minutes. So these are minutes, these are miles. At this rate, how long will it take him to finish the race? So 
so he's got to go a hundred miles. I'm going to take a different approach at this because I know that I can take 32 and eventually turn that into a four. I'm going to cut the 32 into half, that gives me 16, and then I cut it in half again, that gives me 8, and then I cut it in half again, that's going to give me 4. Now I'd need to do that to the 160. I'm going to cut the 160 in half, and that's going to give me 80. I need to cut that in half again, and that's going to give me 40. 40 divided by 2, that's going to give me 20. Well, the reason why I broke it down all the way down to a 4 is because I know that I can turn the 4 into 100. That's what they're asking for right here. A 100-mile bike race. So I took the 32 miles and I turned it into 4 miles because I know that I could multiply 4 times 25 to get 100 miles. Now all i got to do is multiply the 20 times 25. 10 times 25 would be 250. So 20 times 25 would be twice as big as 250. That would be 500. So my answer is right down here. 100 miles minutes. Noah entered 100 mile, a 100 mile bike race. He can travel at 32 miles in 60 minutes, which is the same thing as traveling 4 miles in 20 minutes. And 4 miles in 20 minutes is the same thing as traveling 100 miles in 500 minutes. So we can travel 100 miles in 500 minutes. Next, explain which table you think works better in finding the answer. 32 divided by 8 equals 4, so 160 divided by 8 equals 20. So I like this. I like this chart right here. I don't necessarily need the 96. I would turn the 4 into 100 by multiplying the 4 times 25. 4 times 25 equals 100. And if I did it to this side, I need to do it to this side as well. So 20 times 25 gave me 500. Number five, a cashier worked an eight hour day and earned $58. The double number line shows the amount she earned for working different numbers of hours. For each question, explain your reasoning. So this represents the wages earned in dollars and this represents the time worked in hours. A. How much does the cashier earn per hour? Well, we need to figure out how much $1 an hour would be. $1 an hour is exactly half of $2 an hour. We need to figure out the amount that the cashier earns in one hour. And that's going to be exactly half of the amount that the cashier earns in two hours. So we need to cut this number in half. Half of $14 is seven and half of five dimes or 50 cents is 25 cents so the cashier earns in one hour they earn seven dollars 25 cents b how much does the cashier earn if she works three hours well, there's many ways that we can do this. If we subtract one hour from four, we would get three hours, which would mean that we'd have to subtract $7.25 from $29. That's one way to do it. Or to get a three, we could add one to two. So if we added one to two, we would get three. So this two plus another one would get us to three. In other words, 
we could take this $14.50 plus $7.25 to get the amount that would be hiding right in here, in this area right here, that represents how much she would earn after working three hours. What is 14 plus seven? That's 21. What is 50 cents plus 25 cents? That's 75 cents. So for three hours, she's earning $21.75. A grocery store sells bags of oranges in two different sizes. Three pound bags cost four dollars. Eight pound bags cost nine dollars. So let's say three to four compared to eight to nine. Which oranges cost less per pound? Explain or show your reasoning. So we're comparing three-fourths to eight-ninths. We can show what it looks like this way. This represents one-fourth, two-fourths, and three-fourths. One-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. And we can compare that with one-ninth, Two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, and nine ninths. This represents one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, and eight ninths. One ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths. Eight ninths leaves a smaller amount left over than three fourths. Therefore, eight ninths is larger. Eight ninths is larger. Another way to do it is to do three divided by four, and that comes out to 0.75. Or 75 hundredths compared to 8 divided by 9. How many times does 9 go into 8? 0. Put your decimal. How many times does 9 go into 80? 8. It's going to go in 8 times. 8 times 9 is 72. 8 left over. Again, how many times does 9 go into 80? And this is just going to continue, isn't it? So we can put a line over it. So 88 hundredths repeated. 75 hundredths compared to 88 hundredths. And this is repeating itself. So we could look at these as if they were pennies. What's greater, 75 pennies or 88 pennies? 88 pennies would be greater. Or 88 hundredths is greater than 75 hundredths. So eight pound bags for $9 is a better deal. You get more oranges for your money at eight pound bags of oranges for, for $9. Congratulations, you have completed unit two lesson 15, part part whole ratios. Unit two lesson 16, solving more ratio problems. Number one. Describe a situation that could be represented with this tape diagram. There are a total of 30 fish in a lake, 18 blue fish, and 12 green fish. There are 30 fish in a lake, 18 blue fish to 12 green fish. Number two, there are some nickels, dimes, and quarters in a large piggy bank. For every two nickels, there are three dimes. For every two dimes, there are five quarters. There are 500 coins total. A, how many nickels, dimes, and quarters are in the piggy bank? Explain your reasoning.
So we know that there's a total of 500 coins. So when we have two dimes, we have five quarters. For every two nickels, there are three dimes. Two nickels, three dimes. So for every two dimes, there's five quarters. Let's double the amount of dimes down here so it becomes four. Let's double the amount of quarters so it becomes 10. I'm gonna double the amount of nickels, put it down here and double the amount of dimes and put it down there. I think I'm going to have to erase the total and I might have to add to this grid. Two dimes. If we were to multiply that by three, we would get six as we have right here. So let's multiply the amount of quarters by three. So we keep the same ratio. Five quarters times three would be 15. Well, the good thing is, is now we know how many nickels, dimes, and quarters we have in this row right here. When we have four nickels, we have six dimes and 15 quarters for a total of 25. Now, since we know that there are 500 coins total, we just have to figure out what number times 25 equals 500. And that's gonna be times 20. So 25 times 20 would give us 500. 15 times 20 gives us 300. 6 times 20 gives us 120. 4 times 20 gives us 80. So if we add 80 plus 120, that's 200. 200 plus 300 equals 500. So to answer this question, we have 80 nickels, 120 dimes, and 300 quarters. 80 nickels, 120 dimes, and 300 quarters. B, how much are the coins in the piggy bank worth? $4 worth of nickels, $12 worth of dimes, $75 worth of quarters. $4 plus $12 is $16. $16 plus $75 is $91. The value of all the coins totals $91. Number three, two horses start a race at the same time. Horse A gallops at a steady rate of 32 feet per second, and horse B gallops at a steady rate of 28 feet per second. After five seconds, how much further will horse A have traveled? Explain your reasoning. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Horse A goes 32 feet per second and horse B goes 28 feet per second. So we're just counting by 32. So 32 plus 32 is 64. I'm gonna add 32 to 64, 96. Add 32 to 96. Add 32 to 128. Well, 120 plus 30 is 150 and two plus eight is 10, so 150 plus 10 would be 160. So after five seconds, horse A would have gone 160 feet. Horse B, we're just counting by 28, so 28 plus 28 is 56. 56 plus 20 is 76. 76 plus eight should be 84. 84 plus 20 is 104, plus eight more is 112. 112 plus 28, so 112 plus 20 is gonna be 132. 132 plus eight should be 104. 40. 
So after five seconds, horse B would travel 140 feet. How much further will horse A have traveled? Well, if horse A traveled 160 feet and horse B only traveled 140 feet, that means that horse A traveled 20 feet more. Horse A traveled 20 feet more in five seconds than horse B. Number four. Andre paid $13 for three books. Diego bought 12 books priced at the same rate. How much did Diego pay for the 12 books? Explain your reasoning. $13 for three books. Diego bought 12 books at the same rate. So we need to turn the three into a 12. And we do that by multiplying it by four. Three times four is 12. And now we need to multiply the 13 times four. Diego bought 12 books for $52. Number five, which polyhedron can be assembled from this net? Well, it's gonna have a triangular shaped base, triangular shaped base, and it's going to form a pyramid. It's going to form a triangular pyramid. Number six, Find the area of the triangle. Show your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider drawing a rectangle around the triangle. This is a two by three triangle. So a two by three triangle. This one over here is a one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five. A three by five. This is two by one, two, three, four, five. So this down here is a two by five, two by five. So we need to get rid of these triangles. If we subtract the three areas shaded in purple, it would leave us with the area that they gave us that's in blue. So I drew a five by five square. Five by five is 25 units squared. This large square that I built around their triangle is 25 units squared. I need to subtract the areas of these, of these three triangles. Two times three is six, half of six is three. Three times five is 15, half of 15 is seven. Half of 15 is 7.5, two times five is 10, half of 10 is five. Three plus seven is 10, 10 plus five is 15. Bring down the point five. So we need to subtract 15.5 from 25. Zero minus five, we can't do that, so we're gonna have to borrow. 10 minus five is five. Four minus five, can't do that, gonna have to borrow. 14 minus five is nine. One minus one is zero. So we have 9.5 units squared. The area of the blue triangle is 9.5 units squared or nine and a half square units. Congratulations. You have completed unit two, lesson 16, solving more ratio problems. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.